Let's take a look at question 7. The analogy in the final sentence of passage 2 has primarily which effect? All right, so this question is asking us to analyze an analogy and how it's used. So we need to ask ourselves two questions in order to successfully use the rephrase and predict strategy to succeed on this question. First, what is the analogy? And second, what does that analogy do? So, okay, so first, what is the analogy? So let's find the final sentence of passage two. Okay, here's the final paragraph. Okay, as with ancient peoples who believed that eating fierce animals made them fierce, they assume, who's the they? Uh, media critics, right? So media critics is they. As with ancient peoples who believed that eating fierce animals made them fierce, they assume that watching quick cuts in rock videos turns your mental life into quick cuts, or that reading bullet points and online postings turns your thoughts into bullet points and online postings. So, if eating a bear makes you fierce like a bear, watching a music video turns your brain into a music video, and reading tweets online turns your thoughts into tweets. That's kind of an absurd claim to make, right? It feels too extreme and even a bit silly. Perhaps the author wants to make the media critic sound a little ridiculous. Maybe. So, okay, so what does the analogy do? What's this paragraph trying to say? Well, let's look at the, the rest of the, the paragraph. The effects of consuming electronic media are likely to be far more limited than the panic implies. Media critics write as if the brain takes on the qualities of whatever it consumes, the informational equivalent of you are what you eat. So it's criticizing the media critics. It's saying that they're in a panic about the dangers of media changing our brains, that panic is unwarranted. Uh, Pinker writes that the effects of consuming online media are likely to be far more limited than that panic implies. So the author thinks those media critics should just stop worrying. So the analogy provides an example of beliefs that the author thinks are mistaken, and the analogy is being used to poke fun at the views of the media critics, making them seem silly and overblown. That's my prediction. The analogy is supporting the point that the critics are wrong. Let's take that prediction back to the choices and find a match. I'm going to write it down here. My prediction, the critics are wrong. Okay. So what is the effect of the analogy? A, it uses ornate language to illustrate a difficult concept. Difficult concept, yes. Ornate language? You could see it that way, but is the point of the analogy to use ornate language? I'm not so sure. And this doesn't match our prediction. I'm going to cross it out. Okay. Is the effect to B, employ humor to soften a severe opinion of human behavior? The analogy is kind of funny, but this choice doesn't match our prediction. Is the point of the analogy to soften a severe opinion? Remember that we're looking for an answer that emphasizes how wrong these people are to believe these things. So I'm going to cross that off too. Does the analogy C allude to the past to evoke a nostalgic response? Huh, this sounds fancy, but does it match our prediction? No, it doesn't. Nostalgic response would mean that it makes us long for the past, and that doesn't have anything to do with what the critics are saying. Or does it D criticize the view of a particular group? I mean, yes, this is this matches our prediction. The analogy is criticizing the view of the media critics who believe screen time remakes our brains in a negative way. On test day, I would do what I just did, circle D and move on, because I know how dangerous it can be to second-guess my predictions. Once you start doubting your predictions, you can get sucked into reading and rereading the choices and trying to make them work, and that can eat up valuable time. One last thing I will say about questions about analogies is that these are some of the most difficult and time-consuming questions on the test. So if you're someone who tends to run out of time on test day, you should consider guessing and moving on. Remember, all of the questions are worth the same, and there are easier questions later on. Good luck out there. You've got this.